Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Patio, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information, and advice. Now, if you didn't see part one, I'm sat here with Darren from Key Visa. In part one, we spoke about lots of things, some really interesting stuff, some great advice, and uh, I want to thank you, Darren, for sharing that information with us. It was brilliant. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. Thank you. So uh, in today's interview, what we're going to talk about is the nuts and bolts of the actual real visas and dig down deeply. So if you've got questions out there that you want to ask, please, you know, the details are in the description below. The email's there for you. Get in touch with Darren. He's an extremely knowledgeable man. He's been in this industry 16 years. And uh, if he doesn't know it, well, there you go. You've got yourselves a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so to pick up from where we left off, we were speaking about, you know, you've gone through the, the ASQ hotels, you've done all your quarantine, you're here now, you're on visas. And we mentioned that there were opportunities to convert lots of different visas. Yes. What about if I come here and I want to actually retire here? I mean, I want to now drill down into the actual retirement visa in terms of what you really do need, how long it takes, what's, in, what's in, uh, incorporated in it. So if I'm over 50, which sadly I am, <laughs> but I know I don't look it. <laughs> you watch all the trolls. No, you don't. Right. All the trolls now began, you fat, ugly Englishman. <laughs> you <just> <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, all jokes aside, I'm, I want to retire. What's the criteria? How long does it take? What do I need in detail? Right, okay. So, um, we've got two... We've got two visas you can choose from. Okay. Depending on, if, like I said, your circumstances. The retirement visa is, is normally the best one. Okay. Because it's the easiest and the fastest um, to get. The marriage visa, some people prefer that because they're married, they've got kids and they feel because they're married they want to go for a marriage visa okay, okay. it's also less on the financial side so some right. people go for that so we'll start with a retirement visa yeah okay. so you've come in uh, and you're thinking right okay how old do i need to be 50. 50. yes okay if you look at most of the websites from um you know the Thai embassies and consulates to get a retirement visa abroad you have to be 55. 55 yeah wow. why is that i don't know maybe they're not very good with numbers anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, the, the, overseas, if you want to get a retirement visa before you come, which isn't, don't do it because it's too much of a ball ache okay. with, with insurance and police checks and you know body medicals and stuff like that. So, yeah. can you get a retirement visa for Thailand back in England? Can you can? I never yeah, do that. It's oh. called an OA visa. Right. But the problem is now is if you come to Thailand on an OA. Great, you walk in, you get a year. But when you come to renew it, you have to buy health insurance from the immigration. Well, not from the immigration, okay. but from one of their the providers they tell you. Mm. So if you're 70, 75 years old, you're not going to get it. It's expensive as well. Oh, it? mega, mega. When you get over 65, if you're not already with a company, mm. you're talking, so it's so money. Yeah, I mean, if that's one piece of advice, I think my, my own personal experience I can share is, you know, if you haven't got medical insurance, get it while you can, especially back in your own country, and carry it forward to over here because it is extortionate as, as you get on. And like Darius just said, when you get older, I mean, it's just ferocious. I mean, it is. It silly is money. silly. And to be honest with you, if there is people out there who, at the moment, are trying to renew the retirement visa and this insurance thing is an issue. It can be facilitated. Okay, brilliant. So, so come, come and talk to us because okay. don't worry about that. Okay. okay. Well, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Financial. Right. Retirement visa. The financial for it. Okay. Um, you can do it. You can do it in two ways. You can either put eight hundred thousand baht in the Thai bank and leave it in there for two months. Mm -hmm. Once you've got your visa, it must stay in there for three months after. Okay then you cannot let it drop below 400,000 for the last remaining nine months. Okay. Okay. And am I right in thinking that if they come and speak to you, there are other alternative options perhaps? It could be facilitated. Okay. And I love that word. That, I'm going to change Darren's name to it could be facilitated. <laughs> facilitated. Well, I, it's funny as you should say that because I, I do a lot of talks at the Patia Expat Club yes. and the Patia City Expat Club. And I'm known as the, the facilitator. Yeah, not the equaliser. <laughs> the oh, I that, that was Edward Woodward, wasn't it? No, no? Got, oh Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on about the Denzel White. Oh, <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I'm showing me how to tell me I was retired. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. okay, so obviously the, the criteria as you said that the eight hundred thousand you've got to leave it in there minimum four hundred thousand. But as you just said it can be counted. Sure. People people don't Terry don't want to bring that sort of money over. Mm. Exchange rates, um, problems within, um, how to get it back home, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's serious money as well. There is a lot of money yeah. now on the exchange rate. So a lot of people now think, right, okay, well, it's very, very well known. Go and see an agent and let them, them yeah. help you with it, yeah? Now, that's the retirement visa. So you got- One last question on the retirement. How long will it take me to get a retirement visa? That's what I'm just gonna say. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Because, I'll take my phone. <laughs> <laughs> because we've got to change from a tourist to a nono. Okay. And then from a nono to retirement. Now, if you do it yourself, you have to do it in two stages. Okay. So you go to the immigration with all your documents, and you do the non all first, which is 90 days. After 60 days of that, you go back to the immigration with all the paperwork again, <sighs> then get the one year. Right. But you can come to somebody like me, we can facilitate it, and get it all at the same time. Wow. Do everything for you without your breathing, and it takes roughly, what, 10? 10, 14 days maximum. Wow, that's maximum. incredible. 10 or 14 days maximum. from beginning to end. Maximum. Everything facilitated, yeah. beginning to end, job done. You don't have to move out of the office. Wow. And in terms of retirement, I mean, what's the sort of average cost? I know you can't give an exact cost, but what's the average cost it would, would be to run? Or is it better to do it as an individual case? It's got to be an individual tell. It's, oh, right. it's, it's so up and down. We have set prices, you know. We, we're known for not pulling people's banks down. That's why we've we've got such a good following. Mm, you know? yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. straight, you know, if I can help people I will, but I have set costs and I live by them. Mm. Yeah, no, no, and I can uh, I can reiterate what Darren's saying and, and he's not just you know, singing his own song here, he has got an incredibly good reputation in this area and, and around, you know, if you go speak to any of the expats and speak about Darren, he's got a top, top reputation. So if you want to come and speak to Darren and you are in genuinely safe hands then you know, I can recommend yeah. 100% you know, come and well, see this man. One, one, of our, one of our best services that we do is we do UK passport renewals, UK passports for babies, we now do American passports from this wow. office without even going to Bangkok. Wow, wow, uh, we do all the forms, we do everything. We have people sending their passports to us, Phuket, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, all over the country for us to renew because let's say for a, a British passport you have to go to Bangkok twice. Mm. You want to put it in, want to pick it up. Mm. We do all that. So for some we must have a good name for people to send the passports oh, to yeah. us. Um, yeah. you know so so to we, say goodbye to your passport and say I, I hope that they're gonna send it to this guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know you've you've got to have done your due diligence yeah. first and, sure. and work that out. But yeah the retirement visa so we do it all in one hit. So when we give you the passport back, you've got a 15 month visa. Brilliant. All there. Brilliant. Your second year, third year, fourth year would only be a uh, one year. One year, 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 year. year. Um, All right. The, the marriage visa. Yes, that dreaded word, marriage. <laughs> it's an horrible thing. I mean. What, getting married or the visa? Both. <laughs> both. Uh, the, the, the paperwork. Uh, <laughs> oh my, I'm missing this. <laughs> the, the paperwork required is, is terrible. I mean. It's a lot of identification, but you also have to draw on lo location maps where you stay. You have to provide photographs with you and your wife inside the home, wow. outside the home showing the house number. You have to show uh, rental or contracts with the owner's details or your home ownership details. The, by the time the pack's done, it's that thick. Yeah, that sounds incredible. And. But the only difference is that you only have to have 400,000 baht in the bank, not 800. Was that because the wife took the other 400,000? No, it's because the wife could work. <laughs> Honestly, that's the reason. I didn't know whether you started with 800, give her 400, and then yeah. you get married. <laughs> no, she's gone by that. <laughs> um, Brilliant. But no, 400,000 because their attitude is she can go and work. Right. So that's why the. It's okay. a difference, difference in price. And I mean, obviously, you just said there, uh, Darren, that there's a huge pack involved. I mean, I'm guessing it's going to take a while. It, it, no, it, it, it takes a while. The immigration don't like doing it. Um, if you do it on your own, they will come to your home, they will check that you're a real relationship, they will make sure you've got a neighbour available with their house book to prove 
that you've lived there. Um, it's, wow. it's it's very intrusive. Mm. Um, so if you're over 50, please try to stay with the retirement visa. Yeah. It's done so quick. The marriage visa, when you put the application in, they stamp you one month the immigration, which is what they call an under due consideration period. After the one month, you go back, and if it's been approved, they'll stamp you for the rest of the year. Right. Nine, nine times out of ten, if they've taken the paperwork off you, it will be approved. But it's a pain. The difference is, to, let's say you was under fifty, mm -hmm. you worked here, you got a wife, you can use a marriage visa with a work permit. Ah, okay. But you can a retirement visa. Right. So if I'm here and I'm married and I'm over fifty, I can still go down the retirement visa option. Can, can. If, you, if your plan is just to come here, put your feet up and not do anything, retirement visa. If your plan is to come here, maybe start a business, doesn't matter how old you are, get a work permit, then a marriage visa is the best way forward. All right, well, there you go, you heard it here first. So, uh, the only. There's your options. <laughs> but there's only a, down, there's, <laughs> uh, there's a downside to the marriage visa. If for any reason. Waking up next to <laughs> <year> every day. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> Go on. They never look the same, do they? <laughs> One or two years after. Come on, come on, let's keep focused on the visas. Yeah, yeah. You find yourself loving the dog, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. This is not going very well. Is it? No, go anyway, on. A marriage visa. If, yeah. If you, if, if, you, if you get divorced for any when? reason, or when, yeah, God forbid. Sorry, we've got to stop this. Come on. Yeah. Right, let's, let's go again. Right, so let's go right. with it. Right. So, a marriage go visa, on. yeah? Yeah. You get, unfortunately, you go to the AMPA, you get divorced, you then lose your visa. Oh, okay. So then you have to take the divorce certificate to the immigration, the look at the divorce, look at your visa, stamp your seven days, but within that seven days you can then change to another visa style. So I could change to a re retirement? Then. Can. Oh, okay. Can. Okay. Which a lot of, I've done for a lot of guys. Yeah. And it's very similar to a business visa. If, because I know we're going to talk about this, yeah, but that, that, let, let, let's say for argument's sake, which has happened a lot now, you work for a school, they don't want you to work anymore because of Covid or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you can come to people like me, once your work permit's been handed in, we can then take that paper to immigration and we can have that visa, without you leaving the country, converted to any visa you want. Wow, fantastic. Okay. Marriage visa, retirement visa. If you try to do it yourself, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of like, you know, some people like to do these things themselves. I've got to be honest with you, I'm a bit of a coward. I like to give it to someone that knows what they're doing and if I get a difficult question or something I'm not quite sure how to answer, I can just, you know, I don't need to be put on the spot and say, there you go, take care of it, come back and job well, in. We don't. The only visa we don't do is business visas mm -hmm. because you have to have an accountant brain. You have to know the accounts inside out of the client. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I prefer to leave that to the Thai side, the Thais that do the accounts and the lawyers. Mm. Okay, I prefer to. And leave is that the business them. visa? Yeah. So, so let's talk about the business visa. So, well, I'm on a business visa. Yep. I'm on a work permit. Okay. I let somebody else do my visa. <laughs> right. Enough said. Really, there you go. Enough and then, said. And the reason being because everybody's got their own contact for their own style yeah. of visa. You know, each. Each immigration office has got its, its own team yeah. for doing yeah. the different style of visas, sure. you know? Yeah. I mean, they asked me this year, do you want to change to a marriage visa? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, want to, I don't want to lose my visa, don't you? <laughs> All right. I mean, there is, there's another visa I want to ask you about, which is not so common, but I've seen it banded around on social media, and I've seen it appearing here and there. What's this, like, elite visa thing, this... this <laughs> I'm asking you, and you, you know, just your face says it all. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of mates, a lot, a lot of associates that jumped on the elite visa during the amnesty because they was working offshore, alright, they was earning the money, but they was very concerned about they can't get back here, they don't know what visa to get, they can't get to a Thai consulate because they're working in Abidjan or wherever, yeah. they'll give you yeah. no middle of nowhere. So they got in contact with elite who said, oh yeah, we'll we'll get your visa, we'll meet you at the airport, we'll stick it in your passport, through you go. Now, they charge, I think for uh, a five year visa, I think it's a million baht. And a 10 year visa is Guy and I on two million, I think. 
it, work, it works out something like 100,000 baht. Why would but, you do that? I don't get that. Because a retirement visa or, or uh, a marriage visa is, is nowhere near Because that some of the guys visa. couldn't get here. Ah, okay. Because this is the time when they wasn't letting anybody in on any visa unless right. you had like a super tourist visa, which never comes a to fruition. Bar. It, uh, yeah. That's yeah. incredible. I mean, okay, it's a good visa because it gets you through the airport quick. Mm. And, it, yeah. and it's Ain't that a bonus? And it's, it's <laughs> multiple entry. So, I mean, some guys on the oil and gas are working, you know, they're, ma they're making serious money. Mm. So it might not be a big deal to them, but, you know, I was, I was here many years ago when they, the business went boom, mm -hmm. and so did everybody's visa. Yeah, you know, people lost money. Yeah, and now it's all started again, and I'm just a bit wary of it. So if you can get another different style of visa, I would probably okay. advise you to do that. Yeah. All right, brilliant. Well, there you go. What an insight, and what a what a very knowledgeable man, Darren is. Last question on the visa. And I want to talk about a couple of other things before we finish off today. But the last question is: all of these visas that you've mentioned, all the visas that we've spoken about. Do I still need to do my 90 day reporting? Yes. On every visa? Yes. Okay, and is that something that you can take care of here or yeah, do I have do to go one. down and... Do plenty of them. You know, guys who are, shall we say, lazy, don't like the immigration, uh, want to play golf, you know, want to go and have the breakfast with the mates and don't want to be bothered sitting yeah. down there and getting corona or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, where co or whoever is gone. So, yeah, they'll just come to us for a few hundred baht. We'll, we'll take you down there, do it, and tell them to come and pick it up when they're ready. Yeah, I mean, if I'm on a retirement visa, and I'm asking the question, because I generally don't get this, but if a retirement visa is for a year, why do I have to keep going down every 90 days and saying I'm still here? They want to make sure you're still breathing. Okay. So, there's, there's, there's a few reasons. Number one, they want to make sure you're still alive. Number two, if you're late, with the United Air Report, they've got a reason to find you. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, thirdly, the, if, I, if you remember, on I said about retirement visa before, the, the money had to be in before and after. Well, the 800,000 has to be in three months after. Now, if you do the visa yourself, retirement visa, yeah. on your next 90 days, they will probably give you a sheet of paper asking you to bring a bank statement showing that 800,000 baht in. Right, wow. Now, if you've had it facilitated, yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't, it all goes away. So, okay. So, what, what I'm saying is, <clears throat> some people do like us to do the, the 90 days. Yeah. Know. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? It, it does. It makes sense. It does. Um, you know, like I said, um, we're here for a reason. Sorry. Visa agents are not here to rip you know, rip you off or steal your passport or whatever. I'm a fine. If I do something wrong, I'm going to non polite prison and eat your red rice three day times a day. Yeah. Away, you know. Well, now, we're going to talk about what you eat because clearly you yeah, eat a lot. We'll talk about in yeah. a second. Yeah. Your missus keeps cooking for me. <laughs> anyway, this, uh, no. So, so again, we have always stuck to the idea that I look after people's passports better than my own. Yeah. You know, we had an incident just after New Year. Um, on a company on Third Road, he decided to steal roughly about 100 foreign passports and a massive amount of money, and yet he's been going a dozen years. Wow. Now, they got the passports back, but not the money. So then people were left in a yeah. very awkward position, unfortunately. So, you know, if you have to pay a little bit more for their safety and the peace of mind, then sometimes it might be worth Yeah worth that if you can afford to do it you yeah know? that's yeah. what we say to people yeah no that's a fair point well you know it's been brilliant the information that you shared has been amazing um i still got a few like things on would you like to talk about business visa we can do should we do that yeah talk all right about business. so i'm here and i want to set up a business what visa do i have <laughs> right okay <laughs> but business business visas uh, like i said completely different to it. every other visa so hard to get once you've got it, it's still hard to renew it. Mm. Okay, you know when I come to renewal time, my accountant will come to me and I will sign no, mm. no about three hundred pieces of paper. You know all about yeah. this, yeah. You know um, tax, yeah. VAT, balance sheet. Well, this doesn't match up that, so you've got to pay extra for that. Immigration visit as well. 
Yeah, well, yeah, and they'll come and take photos of yeah. your office and your <laughs> yeah. staff. And, Smile. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I first got my work permit 16 years ago, nobody told me what it was. Nobody told me how it worked. Okay. Or it was about now. I have a lot of guys coming in and say, Darren, I want a work permit. I said, right, uh, and a business visa. I said, right, okay, tell me what your business is going to be. Well, I don't really want to tell you a secret. I said, well, I want to know because I want to know whether a work permit is viable for your business or not. Mm. So they'll tell me, well, you know, we're thinking of setting up this sausage, you know, shop and selling buns and stuff like that. So forget it, man. Mm. I said, because if you work out the tax, national insurance, you got to have four members of staff, you got to have a premises, you got to pay the rent, electric, you know, if you do not earn 50,000 baht a month as a foreigner, mm. that's why you got a work permit, you still have to pay the tax on that. Mm. So, um, I normally say to people, unless you're earning or can cover 200 to 250,000 baht per year to cover your work permit only, don't bother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. it's, and, yeah. you know, because when I started 16 years ago, I'm sat there two months into it, I get a bill and a 10 day notice from the from the tax office, 80,000 baht VAT. I thought, well, I haven't <laughs> made anything yet. <laughs> I'm well, 80,000 where's that coming from? And I rang my accountant and they said, well, you haven't bought anything much, but you've, you've, you've got, you've been selling stuff. I said, well, I've got nothing to trade with VAT. This is the problem with VAT is, not many people have that registered. So there's a lot of stuff you can't claim against. Yeah, yeah. So most of the stuff that you sell, anybody who's had a business before, will you will be paying near enough 100% VAT on everything you sell. And that's the hard bit. Yeah. yeah running a business, right. you know, yeah. running it well as legit as you can. So I'd, I'd like to, I do like to advise people that a business fees and a work permit is nice to have, but it's not. Mm. That's why a lot of people who are managers of certain drinking establishments and stuff don't bother mm. because it just kill it. Yeah, for sure. You yeah. know, like yourself, don't yeah. you? Yeah. So they have all the ways of facilitating different things. But um, a business fees, uh, if you sat in an office like me, you need it. Yeah. Uh, people ask me, well, I'm a, uh, I'm an internet nomad. And, work from home and I work off the beach and I go and need a work permit. So, well, I don't. Mm. Digital nomads don't yeah, tend to true. bother because they're not getting, most of them are not getting an income from Thailand. They're just doing a bit of their own yeah. work. Yeah. Nothing to do with Thailand, not taking any money off the Thais. Mm. So, you know, the Thais know it's very difficult to prove, so mm. they just leave it alone. Mm. So, well, there you go. That's a very comprehensive uh, options that you've given us here. Thank you very much. So just to recap then, if uh, we're thinking about visas, get in touch with Darren, have a chat with him, he's got a huge wealth of knowledge here. Um, but before we wrap up, I just want to cover one thing with you. And that is, when I first met you, I was the big guy, you were the smaller guy, and now you are just like a portable walking machine. I mean, tell me about the uh, transition that's gone on with your okay. weight training and everything. Obviously, I get a lot of stick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when when I was in my twenties, I was big into powerlifting. Never bodybuilding. There's two different yes, two true. different things. People who think you go to the gym, you know, you take some stuff and you end up like Alex Watson and you're over there. Okay. Mm. Just tell the people out there there ain't no magic pill. Mm. You can't just take a pill and that that be the end. Of yeah. It. Okay. Mm. Um, so I hurt me back. Uh, squatting and I left it alone for a long time. I come to Thailand and started doing quite a lot of uh, cardio work, running, stuff like that. It got boring, you know, Thailand. You know, I, I found it a bit hard on my back again. Yeah. So I decided, right, okay, I fancy getting back into powerlifting, but I was getting a bit old, you know, and I thought, well, I might as well give it a go. And I started about five years ago and Kept on with it and on with it, and now it's a, a big part of my life. Yeah, you know, of course, well, not only a big part, it's big <laughs> ways. Competition wise, and you know, people got to understand out there, they say, What's wrong with Darren? You know, why is it? 
if you're benching like I am now over 200 kilo, I know. <laughs> right, okay. And I can't help but laugh when you say it's okay. You know, you're just chucking 200 kilo plus. <laughs> over 200, and that's my last set. Yeah. You know, I've just, I've just done it, you know, just shifted like a ton of weight before. Yeah. You know, that you can't do that on skin and bones. No, for sure. You've got to have weight behind you. Yeah. So I've got certain goals in my life that I want to achieve as far as bench pressing is concerned, which is my favourite. Yeah. Okay, I've always loved it. Um, and when I've hit them goals, then I will diet and go back. Now, I'll never be as small as I was, but you diet then. Honestly, you, if you'd you have seen Darren years ago when he was tiny, wow. But you can't, you can't lift 200 kilo on skin and bones. No. You true. need weight behind you. And unfortunately, people like Eddie Hall and all these big weightlifters, you know, they, You'll see them, they all have bellies on them. And the reason is because, the, you know, you want the weight to go in certain places, but yeah. it, you can't choose where it goes. Yeah. If it goes on your face, if it goes on your stomach, it goes on your ass, well, that's just bad luck. Yeah. You've just, sort of, you just got to work and so I've got three off. bits of bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I've got the weight, I just don't do the training. You yeah. train well uh, yeah. when, when it's open. When it's open, yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant. But, uh, brilliant. Yeah, but um, I won a competition this year. Um, I won the over 50s, um, I won the um, overall, so we had lads that were in the 20s and 30s. Oh, and, and I love that. <laughs> and I just pasted them. But it was weird really because it was my first competition here and I was stood next to guys who were, I was like this, you know, like yeah. six foot four and wow. built like a British, so I thought I'm going to get murdered here. Yeah. And I just pasted them, like, I, just, really? I just got down and did my thing. And I've got another one, it's supposed to be in February, but I think Colby's killed it, so it'd be later in the year. And if I go through, if I win that, then I go through to the Asian finals. Wow. So one last question. What's the maximum you've benched in one rep? One rep max to 237. 237. <laughs> and that is kilos, not pounds. 237. <laughs> Um, wow. I've only ever had one bad injury when I dropped 200 kilo on me, on my chest Incredible. and snapped my finger, snapped my thumb. Wow. And what I did was I got back up and I put 200 back on the bench with a snap thumb and did it again. Well, there because you go. It's, it's, <laughs> just, it's just what you've got to do, mate. And, yeah. You know, I've got, a, I've got a personal life and I've got a work life. You know, Fantastic. This is what I love to do. Well, I can honestly say, Dan, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so Thank much. You. I know Don't, come crush again. Again. Don't crush me in. Please come again. <laughs> but yeah. no, all seriousness, uh, you know, thank you so much. It's been very, very enlightening. It's very informative. And it is really, really good that you've shared that knowledge with us. Thank you so much. Don't, and the guys out there, don't be scared about coming and talking to us. We don't charge anything for a free consultation. Sure. You know, if, if you don't get the answers that you want, then I'm sorry, but I'll do my best to help you. That's yeah, it. and that's all you can ask. So there you go, you've heard it straight from Dan himself, and I will reiterate what he said to you. Come and have a chat with him. You know, it's not gonna cost you anything. The contact details are all below. Please get in touch. It doesn't matter how insignificant you think the question is, it could be a very serious outcome if you ignore it. So get in touch with this man, let him and his team of experts here deal with what you're asking for, and then uh, you'll be in safe hands. All right, so that's it from us. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you.